Hi there! What a great subject to cover today. Thank you, Roby Robinson. We had a quick conversation about hardening off orchids that have been indoors and then they come outdoors because woohoo! Temperatures are rising and we can take advantage of the great natural light that we have outdoors plus natural airflow and all the good stuff. Well, minus maybe the pests, but we are armed and ready for pests. Anyway, today it's about light and hardening off your orchids because even though we have the opportunity to give our orchids supplemental light during the winter indoors, natural light is a different story altogether. So despite having artificial lights throughout the winter and being able to give our orchids the hours that they need, and we are able to override the winter darkness by supplementing with light, there is nothing that compares to natural light. And hardening off orchids coming from indoors to outdoors is something that is pretty important important for those of us that have the opportunity to move our orchids outdoors. So I'm just going to tell you what I do to hopefully avoid any sunburn on my orchids <laughs> because that can happen very very quickly. First of all we are in a covered portico here. It's a south facing portico which I also have with a perimeter of trellising that breaks up the light. On top of that I have a curtain and none of this is guaranteed to work because we also have gaps in the trellising and gaps in the curtains. So watch out for any gaps that you may have where you put your orchids. As the angle of the sun rises, even though you're in a covered space, the angle of the sun may be such that it's actually hitting the orchids directly. So cover them up as best as possible, even though it may appear to be darker than what you're used to with artificial lights. We tend to think they're pretty bright, but outside shade is still brighter and more intense than our artificial lights indoors. Ideally what you want to do is bring your orchids outside on a warm day that is overcast. Then you don't have to worry about burning, but the overcast light is a super way to get orchids accustomed to what is coming next. Now older structures are not as susceptible to burn. So keep that in mind as well, that when you have orchids that have been growing new structures throughout the winter, they are much, much more tender than you would think. So not just protecting them with a curtain, you can also move your orchids in such a way that the new growths are definitely facing away. Any orchids that have developed new growths, they can all be positioned in one area where the new growths are guaranteed to have shade. And if you can find pockets in your outdoor space that are in perma shade, even though it's a very, very sunny day, then use that for the time being because any reflections from any facade from the floor up is a wonderful safe light source as the orchids are adapting to the light outdoors. Bright bright shade, overcast days, and if you don't have an overcast day it's ideal even to bring them out when it is very very windy. The wind usually this time of year is not as hot, so if they do have a little bit of sun with a sort of cloud sun, cloud sun intervals, at least the cool breeze will help keep the leaves cool as they adapt and become accustomed to stronger light. If you can start the process very very early in the season, for example, what I do is, even though my night temperatures are not yet warm enough to keep my orchids outside all the time, my day temperatures definitely are. So even if the day temperatures are not super super hot, but ideal for your orchids to be outside, start the process of moving them outside very very early in the season and bring them back in as the temperatures drop to a not an agreeable level. But this way you're starting to harden them off using the weaker light that the transition from winter into spring provides. And you can also be a little bit more lenient with having to be so careful about covering them up and protecting them and keeping them in constant shade. So while we are considering hardening of orchids that have been indoors all winter and are coming outdoors and hardening them off, if you have orchids that do live outdoors all winter because your temperatures allow for that, know that while they were in the bright winter sun during those months, the switch up of extra day length is now also going to be a problem for those even though they've been hardened off by winter sun. As there is more daylight, it also warms up, so the orchids that are accustomed to the bright bright winter sun 
now need to move more into the shade as the temperatures warm up. So there's a shift between what is coming outside to harden off and then there's a shift from what was outside that now needs to be protected a little bit more as the sun gets stronger and stronger and more intense. So you don't want to just be protecting the orchids that you're bringing outside. Remember the ones that have been outside, they now need some protection from the stronger sun as well. Seeing as my day today is overcast, I do have a little break in the clouds every once in a while. You can see I've just raised the curtain. The occasional break in the clouds will allow some direct sun to hit the orchids, but at the same time, the air is much, much cooler. So there is no risk at this point in time that I'm going to burn anything. The amount of light they are right now getting would be considered dark, but in actual fact, it's relatively bright. And it is enough for them to get used to already having stronger light than what they had indoors. And this is absolutely ideal. Overcast, not quite warm yet, warm enough for the orchids to be outside, no risk of burning, but they're getting some intense light already. There, now you can see there is a break in the clouds and there is direct sun hitting my leaves. At this point, it is important to monitor and see that the cloud cover will come back so that the light doesn't start to fixate on a single leaf and start to burn. Ever so often when this happens, it would be a good idea to go to the candidates that are more susceptible to burn. You can see that some of my leaves have really, really suffered it's all part and parcel of getting to know how much the orchid can handle. I just go around touching my leaves ever so often when I have the curtain up just to be on the safe side. And we're back to some clouds again. So you see, this is what I mean. These conditions are perfect. It's not that much of a worry. You don't have to be so on top of things. It's a little bit cooler, but warm enough for the orchids to be outside. And also know your shadows know when the sun hits a spot later in the day as opposed to what it looks like in the morning. If you don't have the time to take out the collection all at once and bring it back in in the evenings, should that be the case, then I would take the ones out that you know are the more sensitive and start the hardening off process much, much sooner. A Brassavola digbiana, for example, that needs very, very bright light can handle a lot more intense light much quicker simply because it's got some glaucous protection on the leaves. Many bifoliate cattleyas, on the other hand, they don't really appreciate that much bright light. So they need gradual hardening off. And those are the kinds of orchids I would bring outside if I don't have time to address the entire collection that could go outside without having to bring everything inside again. I know this was a bit of a staggered video because every environment is different, but I do hope that some of the tips that I have just passed on will be of help. The shadows are very, very important. Dappled sunlight is important. Airflow is important. This video specifically addresses the subject of hardening off your orchids to be able to handle the intense light that is coming further down in the season. This is not about hardening them off to cold temperatures. If temperatures drop at night, bring them back in. But if the temperatures are agreeable during the day, get them out there and get them used to the light while the temperatures are still somewhat mild but warm enough for them to be outside and while i was filming this video i've had four stints of overcast back to sun overcast back to sun while the curtain was up if for example i can now see that my cloud cover is clearing and there will be blue skies after the clouds have passed then that curtain comes down I don't mind if they are a little bit darker than I would normally like. It is safer that they are in perma shade as opposed to me getting distracted walking away and burning leaves after the fact. <laughs> I hope that this was helpful, Roby Robinson. Maybe some pointers were here that you can take into consideration for your collection as you harden off your orchids. And anybody else that was watching this video, know that artificial light is wonderful, but it is a supplemental light. It is not the same as outdoor light. So be careful when you bring your orchids outside. Have yourselves a fabulous time doing so because I always get very, very excited when I get to bring my orchids outside. It's not only that I can breathe easy, they seem to be able to enjoy it as well. Wishing you a beautiful day on one condition though, that you stay safe and take care. Bye.